Hello guys and welcome to another video. Uh, this is gonna be part two of these videos where I'm talking about the, the items that you guys saw on the opening clip. Uh, the very first video was mostly about the Tricklet Brewer. You guys saw me brew some coffee in that. I talked a little bit about Onyx Coffee and a little bit about the grinder, but on this second video, we're gonna concentrate more on the grinder itself. And like I told you guys, I'm gonna try to dial in for espresso for the very first time. I've never used the, the 1Z Presso. This is the K Plus model. I've never used it for uh, espresso. It, I always make either drip coffee or with the tricklet, but we have 18 grams dosed out here. Now, normally for drip coffee or for the tricklet, I've been uh, grinding right around four. So you guys see the four there, there's a little red dot. Uh, that lines up with wherever it is you're grinding. Now, I'm going to start, that's, a, that's one of the, the really neat things about this uh, grinder that you can dial in right here. It's very easy to see where you're at. It's, it's super simple and very, well, you, we'll get more into the grinder in a little bit, but on this second video, we're gonna concentrate on the grinder. We're gonna dial in for espresso. In a minute, we'll pull a, pull a shot. We're gonna try to pull a shot with the hypotheticals from Onyx. And again, I'm gonna start just below three. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go just below like two clicks. You see, like two clicks below three. We'll start there, see what we get. Uh, we have 18 grams. Uh, we always, well, my goal is always to uh, get a shot between 25 and 35 seconds with about a five second pre-infusion and uh, 18 grams, we'll start with that. Let's see what happens, let's see what we get. Hopefully we get a tasty shot. If not, we'll dial in and uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll succeed uh, maybe on our second or perhaps even our third try. Let's see what happens. Uh, I have a feeling this video might get a little bit long. Uh, if that happens, I'm gonna probably split it up, split it up into maybe two or three videos, or who knows, maybe I can say everything I wanna say uh, fast enough to where it'll all be in one. But if you see here on the thumbnail, if you saw part one, part two, whatever, then now you know what I'm talking about. So we are gonna talk about all these things. Uh, as a matter of fact, please subscribe to the channel. If you like this coffee stuff, <laughs> I have a playlist on the channel, coffee related videos or something like that. And I'm gonna kind of group all these videos that have to do with coffee uh, all together so that if that's all you're interested in, just, you know, just check those out. Okay, so the next item we're gonna talk about is the, this is the Onesie Presso K Plus model, okay? So in some places they pronounce it Easy Presso K Plus. So this company, the Onesie Presso, they, this company makes a lot of hand grinders, okay? They make a lot of hand grinders I did a bit of research and a lot of people say that this is the one to get, okay? If you wanna be able to do pour over, you wanna be able to the trick lid, you're gonna do drip coffee, you're gonna do espresso, and this will grind all the way down to Turkish coffee. So if you're going to want to have just one hand grinder for multi-purpose that does a good job on everything, this is the one. So far, this thing is just from, this thing is bulletproof. I mean, let me show you guys this. It comes, so you get it with a, with a nice carrying case, okay? It stores everything in here for you. You get everything in one box, it comes with it. Okay, you get a little cleaning brush, the handle, the uh, grinder itself. 
okay you get some instructions this thing is made out of metal everything is like extremely well made it looks like super high quality uh, grinding with this thing every morning is a pleasure okay and the reason why i got this is because before okay when i was gonna make my my coffee in the morning i had to pre-grind the coffee at least uh, like the day before in in the daytime because if you start the electric grinder early in the morning i, I wake up at 4 30 okay so if you start the electric grinder early in the morning that's a good recipe there for divorce i mean <laughs> just don't do it don't do it okay get yourself a hand grinder it's super quiet and if you can do like this thing you grind 18 grams for the triclet which is somewhere between espresso and drip coffee it's finer than drip coffee but not quite as fine as espresso so you grind 17 grams which is what i've been doing every morning 17 grams for the triclet in 20 seconds 25 seconds maybe maybe you're super slow maybe 30 seconds okay so if you can't do 30 seconds worth of exercise in the morning i i don't know man i don't know but anyway this thing is bulletproof it's super well made it's a pleasure to use basically here's the handle you just put it in there and you grind away okay uh, the catch cup another thing is this is super awesome it's magnetic there's nothing to screw on or anything like that it's just magnetic it never falls off it works perfectly okay and your adjustment for the grind size is right up here so you, there's no clicks on the bottom the clicks are right here okay it works it works perfect this thing so far i love it this is this was the right the right grinder to get at least for me i know that for example i thought about the comandante the comandante has tons of it's the most popular one it's what a lot of people like to get to grind with the comandante it's it'll take way longer okay way longer to grind than with this to, it, to go from grinding for espresso to grinding for the triclet or pour over or something like that, it would take a lot more turns, a lot more finicky back and forth. And to tell you the truth, in, in my opinion, this one just looks better for, for me, okay? I know, I'm, I, I hope I'm not offending anybody. <laughs> but anyway, listen, check it out. Check it out, check out the Comandante, because that was my other, my other option. It was either this or that. But, they recommend that for a variety of different things and to use like on a daily basis, this is the way to go. And you know what? I'm going to agree with that. This thing is awesome. Love it. So far, love it. 10 out of 10. Will recommend. All right. So let me show you something else that you get with the 1T Presso, which I thought it was pretty cool. I never use it, but uh, it is, it is kind of cool. Okay. You get this little piece here. This piece you use on the bottom. This bottom you can take apart, different parts to it. Something like this. And then what happens is you get this different bottom piece. You see it's open. So this goes in here like this, kind of blocks the, the bottom. So you end up, once you use the little plunger to kind of block this, this part, it sits right in there, blocks this part. And again, all of these things are so well made. I'm, I'm really amazed by the build quality, the materials used here. This is, this is very, very nice. And then you build this thing back up. I think you gotta remove this bottom. And you use this one here. Like this. Then you put the magnetic part on top. And then you end up with this kind of setup. So what happens is, again, this still, the magnetic part is still there, so it'll still click into place. But then what happens is like, let's say you wanna doze right into your porta filter, right? So your ground coffee will be in here. And then you can just, you take this part off and you kind of shake it around like this. And since it's open, it's gonna drop right inside your porta filter. So you don't need a dosing funnel or anything. You just sit this on your porta filter you remove this, you shake it around a little bit to get the ground coffee off of it, and everything drops right into the porta filter. I think it's pretty ingenious, pretty cool. Again, I haven't uh, used this grinder yet for, uh, for espresso, so I do wanna get into that, but I haven't gone there yet. 
uh, because again, I got it. The main purpose for me for this grinder was to use it in the mornings, grind fresh coffee every morning. I love the smell, I love the process. And not to have to use my electric grinder, which is noisy, okay? So right here, noise free. All right, so you saw all of that, and then you also get the little brush, like I told you guys, I haven't even used it. I don't see the point of having to brush this thing all the time. But you do have it, and you get a little blower. You get a little blower if you wanna blow out in there and get everything nice and clean. So everything comes, everything comes here in the all in one, in, one, uh, in one box, one carrying case, and it's nice to store it in here, keeps everything nice and tidy. That's it. Okay, so like I told you guys, it's really easy to load this thing. One of the really nice things about it, nothing ever pops out. Let's see how bad it is for grinding for espresso. People say that a hand grinder for espresso is horrible, it takes too long, it's too much work. <laughs> I don't know. You guys saw for the tricklet. If you haven't seen the first video, please watch it. So if you wanna get the whole picture of everything that's happened here with this whole review, uh, check out the first video. Okay, let's see how bad this is for, for espresso. So we're just below the three. I think there's like, let's see, cause I never actually have checked it. Let's see. Okay, so there's like 10 clicks in between the numbers. So we are starting like two clicks below the three. And again, to go all the way down to zero, we have a wide range there. We should have plenty of room here to dial in. So let's go ahead. Let's grind right here. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, at the end, I always tap it to make sure if there's still a bean in there cut, there's nothing. Okay, that is a little bit of work. I don't see it like a deal breaker. If you wanna get into hand grinding, this hand grinder gives you very good quality coffee. It's worth it. It's super well made, like I've said already. For the tricklet, it's way less grinding. For espresso, yeah, it's a little bit of work, but I wouldn't call it a deal breaker. I wouldn't call it a deal breaker, it's doable. Uh, let's see what kind of shot we get, and we might have to grind again, but let's see what happens. I don't know exactly how long I took because I didn't time it, but when I look at the timestamp on the video, when I watch it back, I'll put the, the how long it took here on the screen but I'm assuming it was somewhere, probably about a minute or something like that. For the tricklet, it only takes me like 25 seconds. It's way less. This was a bit more, at least, I would say at least double, like 50 seconds. It's still, come on, if you can't do a minute of work, uh, of exercise, man, you gotta get out there and do something. But anyway, let's uh, pull a shot and let's see what we get. Okay, so you guys have seen my process before, uh, but we'll go over it again real quick. We have our 18 grams. Always use the dosing funnel. Little w, WDT before we tan. Make sure it's nice and fluffy. Little bit of distribution. I don't think I can tamp with this this time because it's, it's too fine. It's not giving me enough pressure, so we'll use the regular tamper. Just make sure you keep your pressure consistent and that it's, it's nice and even, nice and, uh, that the puck is nice and level. That's important. Okay, so I think I think that this is gonna be way too fine. I think I'm gonna choke the machine and nothing's gonna come out. That's my guess right now. I think this is just way too fine, but we'll see. All right, so like I said, I think this is gonna be way too fine. I think the machine is going to choke and we're gonna get nothing. That's my guess, just from looking at how fine that coffee was. And again, I'm just two clicks below the three. Um, I don't think I'll get anything, we'll see. So yeah, this is an, a proper espresso scale that I have now. So it has auto tear, so you guys will see in a, in a second. You put the glass on, obviously it's gonna weigh the glass, but then it's gonna tear itself back to zero. You see that? And then it will time your shot as soon as it drips in. So again, 
I start counting from when it starts to drip into the into the cup so that by that time we already have pre-infusion. So after it starts dripping, we want to finish the shot in no more than about 35 seconds. Okay, I know that for some people that's kind of a long extraction, but you know, it's all based on what you like and, and the flavors you enjoy and I think that's that's where I like it. So, but again, so I've gotten shots in, you know, 25 seconds, 20 seconds and sometimes it's okay, but I do prefer when the coffee is extracted a bit more. So let's see what we get. I, I think I'm gonna get nothing, but we'll see. Okay, I did a bit longer than normal pre-infusion, hoping that the puck gets uh, saturated and that we get something, but yeah, nothing's coming out. I could tell, I mean, I was able to tell that just from when I tamped. <laughs> As a matter of fact, after distribution, I could already tell it was too fine. We're not gonna get anything. Okay, so here's the thing. I think I decided to learn how to use the hand grinder for espresso with two of an expensive coffee. So don't do that, guys. Get, get like something like really cheap at the market and practice with that before you try to <laughs> try a new grinder or, you know, because you're not used to the settings. You're not, you, you, you have no clue where to start. So now I'm gonna try at two clicks past the four. So, I mean, this is 12, this is 14 clicks, coarser grind to try again, second attempt at espresso. Let's see, I think as soon as I pack the puck and I distribute and I tamp, I can kind of tell if it's, if how, you know, how, where I'm gonna be at. So I guess I'm, I'm getting pretty good at this, so. Let's go ahead, let's try it at this setting. So this is quite a big change, but again, we got absolutely nothing. So <laughs> let's see what happens. Second attempt. All right, so this time it took me just about as long as it takes every morning, uh, about 20 seconds, 25 seconds. It's not bad at all. The other one was way too fine. It took a lot longer, uh, but again, this is not, it's not a big deal. People make it seem like it's like, horrible to grind with a hand grinder for espresso it's not that bad uh, okay let's see what we get this time oh another thing i wanted to mention so i guess on the tricklet i've been going uh, kind of like into the into the espresso range right um on the tricklet i've been having to grind fine because again you want to control that flow you want to get that brew time to at least like I would say like six minutes, seven, eight minutes. That's where you get real nice coffee. And so I've, I've been having to grind a lot finer than I thought. So uh, pretty much into the espresso range. So let's see what we get. Okay, so this time based on my puck prep and the way things went, I think we're gonna get something. I don't know if we'll be in the, in the correct range of time, but I want to guess that yes, we will be. We will be. It went uh, the way I was expecting it. Uh, again, you, you guys have to, when you tamp down, I mean, this is obviously just for beginners here, but when you tamp down, you want enough room here so that when you lock this in, you don't get an imprint of the shower screen on your coffee grounds, okay? Um, and again, if, if you grind really, really fine, you might have to use like a regular tamper. You cannot use that other tool because, um, you know, I, I don't wanna be adjusting that, the height of it all the time. So uh, I, I distribute and then I'll just go ahead and use the regular tamp. So you just wanna get it, use the same pressure every time and get it as flat and nice and even as possible. So let's try a, a second attempt and let's see what we get. Uh, everything's the same though, everything's the same, 18 grams. Um, but again, I told you guys I'm 14 clicks coarser. <laughs> and I think I'm in the right range now, let's see. This is pretty much the way I grind for the, for the tricklet. All right, let's see. I'm gonna give it a nice long pre-infusion again. Okay, here we go. Guys, it smells so good right now in this kitchen. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I like the one to three ratio, so I'm going for 54 grams here. Okay, we got 53.6 in 21 seconds. That's a fast shot for me, okay? I wanna be at least 10 seconds longer than that. So this is gonna be 
for, for my taste, a little bit under extracted. For some people, this would probably be great. I mean, people do turbo shots and all that, but um, still, I'm gonna, we're gonna taste it. I, I'm pretty sure this will still be good, but for my particular taste, I usually like to be at least another 10 seconds. But remember, we also had like a six second pre-infusion, so it should be fine. Let's taste it. So yeah, like I was telling you guys, man, it smells so good in this kitchen right now. It's nothing like learning and being able to do this yourself. You go to a coffee shop and yeah, it's fun, it's cool, but there's something about doing it at home, making it your way. Look at the crema, nice fresh coffee from Onyx. Smells great. Mild acidity, but nice. There's a sweetness to it, but still, I could tell it's a little bit under extracted. There is a little, a little sourness mixed in there that shouldn't be in there. And that would go away if we would have, um, if the shot would have taken another 10 seconds or so, that would have not been there. Let's, let's just say that way. Now, we'll go ahead and turn it into a milk-based drink. And once you put milk and a little bit of sugar into it, man, it's all good. The next one I know. Now the next one, I'm gonna come down probably like four clicks. But yeah, this is still very acceptable. It's nice espresso. We'll go ahead and try to make a cappuccino. Let's go. I have other tutorials on the channel on how to use the espresso machine. This is a Brevo infuser, a model 840XL, and the Brevo Smart Grinder Pro. I have already uh, videos on the channel on that. So a lot of times my latte art is, uh, needs a lot of help. <laughs> and a lot of times I do better than this though, but I'm still getting used to these glasses. Yeah, they're really cool. Uh, they're made for you pulling a nice latte art, but I'm still getting used to them. And uh, anyway, this is what we got today. Now what's important here is the taste. Let's give it a taste test. All right, let's taste this thing. That's awesome, guys, awesome. Now, I do have to say though, for my taste, okay, what I, what I like, eh, when I make a milk-based drink like this, I like my roast to be a little bit darker. This here is like a medium roast, uh, maybe even lighter to medium. And usually I like to, for milk-based drinks, I like the roast to be a little bit darker. I like more of those chocolatey notes, uh, caramel notes, okay, and this uh, coffee has a little bit of that, but I would say it still has a little bit higher acidity than I would like on my milk-based drinks. Now, for the triclet, it's it's great. For the triclet, as a matter of fact, I like even lighter rolls, but anyway, you know, that's why you gotta try different things. This is great. You guys saw me dial in on the 1Z Presso K+. Plus for the very first time for making espresso. And I got it pretty close on my second attempt. The next time I make another espresso shot with the 1K Plus, now I know where to start, right? I know that I have to be somewhere around four, maybe a little bit, two, three clicks below four, two or three clicks over four, depending on the, on the coffee. For this particular coffee, the hypotheticals, I'm going to be, I'm gonna bring it down four clicks. So I'm gonna go four, I'm sorry, two clicks below the four. Okay, so I wasn't planning on pulling another shot, but my wife ended up drinking the cappuccino. So we're gonna go ahead and make another shot. I, I dialed it back four clicks. Okay, so now we are two clicks below four and we'll see what we get. I think this is gonna be the magic number. Now, if all it takes is like three times to adjust four, a new coffee and what I've noticed uh, in my experience is that that's usually what it takes 
Okay, your first one, you're kind of way off. Your second one, you're really close. And your third one, you get it. If not, you're gonna get it on the fourth one. That's usually the process. And that's whenever you change to uh, new beans. Now, if you've used those beans before, uh, you might have a good idea of where you should start at. And it might only take you one or two times. And a lot of times I get it right from the get-go. Now, being the first time that I grind with the hand grinder, then obviously I had no clue. But usually, for next time I will know. I will know, now I know I have to start with four. Just like on the uh, Breville Smart Grinder Pro, I know I always start with 20, okay? I might have to go down to 18 or 16, or maybe 22 or 24, but I'm usually right in that range with any, any kind of coffee, any beans. All right, so let's see what we get. I'm really, really uh, interested in finding out if I'm gonna get it just right. So again, we're shooting for uh, somewhere between 25 and 35 seconds with a five second pre-infusion. Uh, let's see what we get. All right, we did another kind of long pre-infusion, about six seconds, seven seconds. And now I should take about 30 seconds, let's see. Again, we're shooting for a one to three ratio, that's uh, 54 grams out. Okay, so 35 seconds, but we, I should have like stopped it a little bit sooner. So we're, we're right there, this is, this is it. This is gonna be where I like it. It's gonna bring out a little bit of that sweetness, more sweetness of of the on the coffee. For me, this is this is gonna be spot on, delicious. Let's let's taste taste it, and then we're gonna make another cappuccino. But let's taste it like this first. Okay, here we go again. The smell. Oh man, this is so much sweeter now. Oh yeah, now it's a lot more balanced. You have that sweetness. This coffee still being a, a little bit lighter roast, you do have that little bit of acidity. But yeah, it definitely brings a little bit of that chocolatey, chocolate goodness, like a dark chocolate, like a caramel. Oh, delicious. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn this into a cup of tea. Okay, so we got a little bit prettier heart this time. All right, so my wife said that I should talk about the milk that we use. Uh, it does make a difference. I gotta say, it does make a difference. Uh, what is this thing, Horizon? I don't know, I just call it the flying cow. <laughs> we use the 1%. The higher fat content that you get, it'll be easier to make your latte art. This is uh, pretty much as hard as it gets unless you get skim milk. And, and it does make a difference. I mean, this stuff is great, okay? <laughs> Try it out. Believe me, the taste is, it's on point. Okay, so you guys saw we were able to dial it in and get it just right. Uh, again, there's four ounces of milk here, like two ounces of coffee and one teaspoon of sugar. That's my magic formula. Wow, a nice layer of foam, a proper cappuccino. And so good, guys, wow. You know, it does make a difference. The other one was great, but this one's better. <laughs> At least, you know, to each their own. At least for me, my wife loved the other one. She drank, that's why she drank all of it. But uh, this one has more of that, like burnt sugar, chocolatey flavors, caramel flavors that you get from a longer extraction, okay? Delicious, anyway. I thought I had finished the video, but now I really did finish the video. So I'll see you guys on the next one. The very next video uh, on this series will be more just talking about the coffee. That video will probably be shorter than, than these other two. But again, cheers. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Please give the video a like, and I'll see you guys on the next one.